possible. All right, so <clears throat> UI, UUID, the question came up a few times, like what are they good for? What do you use them for? Uh, the main purpose that I see UUIDs for almost always are for an, a, a primary key, an indexable, unique primary key. Within the name UUID, it literally stands for universally unique identifier. Uh, in the case of Microsoft, they took UUID, renamed it GUID, G-U-I-D, which still stands for globally unique identifier. There are four types of UUIDs, V1 through V4. Um, I believe that's how many there are, something like that. And they have these pedantic differences, which if you want to learn about those, click on this Wikipedia link right here on this issue. Um, I'll also post it in chat just in case you really, really want to go check it out. Um, and in, in that, basically, your UUID is always formatted in the database. And these, these are the specific parts that you want to know about as 8-4-4-4-12 alphanumeric digits, or I should say hexadecimal digits, because the number is very specifically 16 octet UUID are represented by 32 hexadecimal digits, and they're broken out in that kind of funny format, right? 844412. Uh, and even though there's the 32 hexadecimal digits, it's important to note that with the dashes, you get 36 characters, because often you will find uh, UUIDs or GUIDs stored in a text field of some sort, or a string field of some sort out of necessity, as they are parsed back and forth between the UUID type. The database does have a type that is specific to this, which makes the 128-bit number or 128-bit uh, value a specific type. So it's not a string, but it can be stored as one. Uh, and there are functions in the database that will generate the UUID or the GUID for you. And also, Outside of that, there's basically a library or a function or a method or something that has uh, this available in every language you can think of. Go, C Sharp, JavaScript, um, what, whatever it is, there's a way to generate these easily on the client side or outside of the database if need be, which makes them a really, really, really perfect unique identifier because then you can put together data with a unique ID on the client side and know that when you insert it, it's gonna be unique in the database. It's a very, very powerful tool within the overall database feature set. And almost every time you see me make a, a database table, if I'm doing it from scratch, I almost, almost always, probably 99% of the time use an ID a, a UUID as the ID. So something like the standard old users, I go with ID, UUID type, and then on the database side, you have generate gen underscore random underscore UUID as a user function. And it's unique. I'm gonna select it as a primary key, which means it will mark it as unique anyway, but I tend to check that box just out of habit. Select it as ID. I'm gonna give it one other column because you'll need that. We'll go with a uh, name. We'll make that text. And let's see here, scroll down. And because it's a primary key, it's automatically set up as a unique key. So it's indexed, right? And then you can click add table and boom. That is a table with a UUID as the main primary key column. So that's, that's the over under on the UUID. Let's do a create console. Like in here you do create data, uh, whoops, not database, create table. How's it? That I think, oh, we gotta create a table name, sample table. Do this, oh, that, that's gonna need quotes. There we go. So we got, sample table um, 
in here, like if we say ID, we should see, yeah, see it's a Postgres supported object type. So you should just be able to do UUID. It's just lowercase in the SQL. Um, and then just mark it as primary key like that. So and then this is text like this. Uh, yeah, I didn't add anything else specific to it. So like that would be your create table statement for just using SQL to create that table that I just did in the interface example. Uh, the key difference, of course, is in the interface and Has the Hasura console, it's created all the metadata necessary in Hasura as well as actually built the table in the database, right? Sarah, I guess there's not a test connection. Is that, oh my goodness, look at that. That is beautiful. Okay, so there. And then let's see, we look in schemas. And then let's create a, no, I don't want to create a schema. I want to create a, a table. That's what I want to do, create a table. All right, so we're going to call this users. I don't even know what database this is in, but that's okay. Um, and then in columns, oh, this is trippy. Yeah, so we'll do like ID. Ah, yeah, so UUID should be showing up in PG admin by default, right? So we'll make it primary key, not, not null, so it should, not no it should be yes not not no oh that's confusing but anyway we'll do the second one real quick name and then let's let's pick like var character varying bit varying that's interesting that they called it character varying um because you just it's called varchar and oh yeah let me put that in i guess so we have text, yep, let's do text, save. 